Hello, in this video I am showing you all the different menus you can go through on the Valiant Ecotech Plus boiler with that touchscreen display. Because there are some interesting menus on this boiler like the energy data menu which shows you how much gas and electricity your boiler is using throughout the day, year, month and obviously the last year also. So that's quite an interesting one to look at. Now in this video, I'm not showing you how to adjust your hot water temperature or your central heating temperature or reset your boiler. I made a completely separate video on how to do all of those things. And you can find that in the cards above now or down in the description. And that video will show you how to make your boiler as efficient as possible. So make sure you check that one out. Whilst I'm talking about other videos, do check out in the description because I've listed a whole lot of other help videos. From how to set your central heating programmer, to cleaning your boiler filter, to fixing that radiator that just won't get hot. So do check those videos out. Right, without any further delay, let's get on with showing you these menus. So let's go through these menus and show you what they all do. So I press the menu button in the middle and the display will get brighter and we can then access all the buttons around the outside. Now in the last video, I explained how to adjust your hot water and central heating temperatures. So we don't need to look at those. Let's start with this question mark. So I press the question mark and that takes us through to this menu where it says user manual. You can see control element is selected. And then if I press the tick, we're taken to this screen where it explains what control elements do. And it's showing one to 12 at the top here. So we have 12 menus to work through. You then have to touch whichever button is highlighted around the outside of the screen, where you then move on to the next element. So you just follow what it's telling you to do on the display. The idea then being that you'll know what each of the buttons are for. They like to call these touch buttons control elements. So you can see I'm just working my way through this menu. I'm touching whatever button that is lit up. You work your way through this menu from one to 12 and every time you touch one of those buttons, it then moves on to the next item. You see we're on number seven now and number eight, number nine, question mark, press that. And then this is for chimney sweep mode. And finally it's telling me the power button, press the tick. It then tells me that this has now ended and press tick again and it takes us back to the user manual. Let's take a quick look at this menu introduction. Use a slider to slide down, press the tick where we then come to this menu introduction and we've got one to four to work through. Personally, I think this menu is more confusing than useful, but don't worry, I'll explain what it means in just a sec. Once we've finished going through this one to four. So there we go. That's the last one. I press the tick and it takes us back to that user manual. I'm then going to press the back arrow and now let's take a look at the actual menu. So I touch the menu button. Now let's take a look what's in the menu. So the first one is controls. Let's press the tick and go into there. Now, depending what timers or programmers you have connected onto your boiler will depend on what you'll see in this menu. If you have no controls which interact with the boiler, you'll just see the menu like this. So just comfort will be showing in this display. Now on this boiler, the sensor room pure was installed. So that activates the built-in timer on the boiler. And you can see there we have heating timer and we have timer programmer assistant here where we can then set up the times for our central heating. Now I'm not gonna go through how we set that up. That's on another video. Hopefully that makes it a bit clearer what you'll find in control. So now let's take a look at what we'll find in information. So we move down to information. We press the tick to enter that. And as you might expect, there's a whole lot of information all about the boiler. So let's use a sliding control and work our way through that. Obviously there we got the water pressure. So that indicates how much water pressure is in the boiler. If we press the tick button, it takes us through to this water pressure menu. Where you can see exactly how much pressure is in your boiler and top it up if you need to. Press the back arrow to go back to our menu. We got our energy data. Now we can go into this and this is where it tells us how much energy we've been using. So press tick. We're then taken to the energy data screen where we can see how much gas or electricity we've been using. Let's press the tick on gas consumption. Then we can take a look at our heating or our domestic hot water. Let's take a look at heating. So press the tick and then we're taken to gas consumption for the heating. Now on this menu, you can see exactly how much gas you've been using. So we've got today, we got yesterday. 
we got last month, last year and our total. As I've just installed this border and it's brand new, there's not much information in here apart from today's usage. Now let's press the back button and take a look at our domestic hot water. So there we go, we enter this menu and again we have exactly the same again. So we can see exactly how much gas we've been using with our domestic hot water. Let's press the back arrow and go back again and let's take a look at how much electricity we've been using. That's our power consumption. Again, we can look at heating or domestic hot water. Let's check our domestic hot water. Again, you can see exactly how much electricity you've been using. So that's it for our energy data. Let's go back to our information screen and move down to status code. I want to jump in here and quickly introduce myself. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for nearly 30 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video at all useful then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up or the subscribe. You can ring on the bell if you want to receive a notification and of course you can share the video with your friends. If you visit my website I have categorized all my videos and products and parts that I recommend so you can easily find what you're looking for. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's bought me a cup of coffee and left a donation in my toolbox fund it's really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos which will hopefully help you now i'm not sure how much use status codes are to you as the end user but they are useful to us heating engineers so as the boiler comes into operation it always goes through set sequences and each of those sequences is given a code so if the boiler was to develop a fault the status codes could tell us exactly what position the boiler got to, hopefully then telling us what part is faulty. Let's go back again. The next one down is control elements. Well, we've already done that. That is what the question mark does. So let's go back again. The next one down is menu introduction. Again, that was already in a question mark. So we've already covered that. So let's go back again. The next one down is installer contact information. If your installer put their details in, you'll find them in here. Their name and their phone number. My number's fuzzed out for obvious reasons. So let's go back again. And finally at the bottom here, we have software version. And that just tells you the software version in use, which of course isn't much use to you. Let's back out of there and move down to settings. Now there's not much in here for the homeowner, but there are a couple of items you might want to look at. Now the first one is chimney sweep mode and that is just for us engineers. We can set the boiler onto full power, minimum power or set a particular power output. Installer level as it says is for installers and you can't get into that menu without using the engineer's code. The next menu item is pretty self-explanatory language, time and display. Obviously it allows you to change the language, change the time and change the display brightness. So that menu might be useful at some point to maybe adjust the time. So let's move on to the final item, which is the button lock. Now this could be useful if you've got someone who keeps touching the buttons on the display and you don't want them to change any of the settings. It's pretty straightforward to lock the screen. So let me show you how. So we select button lock by pressing the tick. Then we're given it an option. Do we want to lock the screen back for no tick for yes. So we press the tick icon for yes, like that. It then says button lock activated and it goes back to the normal standby screen. Now we can't touch anything on the display. To unlock it, we just press and hold the menu button for three seconds. It then says button lock deactivated on the screen and then we're back to our normal operation. Right, that's about it then for the menus. I do hope this video has been useful for you. If you want to watch my video on how to adjust your hot water temperature, heating temperature, and of course turn off that preheat, then you can click on the link just here. If you want to know how to clean your valiant filter, you can click on that video just there. And of course, like I said, enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, click on that subscribe, ring on the bell to get a notification, and it's always my toolbox fund. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time.